Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Asif Qureshi and you are watching Dr. Asif Lectures. So today we are going to discuss a very important topic in lipid metabolism which is called fatty acid synthesis. Now before we begin fatty acid synthesis it is very important to understand a few basic basic concepts. First of all you should understand and appreciate that when does fatty acid synthesis happen? Remember, I told you in the very beginning, in the very first lecture of overview of energy metabolism that your body is always in one of the two forms, two metabolic forms. Either you are in a state of well-fed or you are in a state of fasting. So when you are in a state of well-fed, which is the high carbohydrate meal, this is the time when fatty acid synthesis happen. Okay. Obviously, when you have eaten a lot of carbohydrates, the carbohydrate is way more than the energy you require. So your body starts converting the carbohydrates into fatty acid. So you should remember when does it happen? It happens when we eat a high carbohydrate meal. Okay. Now, what are the ingredients? What is required for fatty acid synthesis? There are four things that you need to remember. The first thing is acetyl CoA. The second thing is NADPH, ATP and carbon dioxide. And I have told you before that uh, uh, NADPH is produced by, if you remember, HMP shunt. Acetyl-CoA is produced as a result of glycolysis activity and pyruvate, and pyruvate synthesis, which later on enters into the trap cycle. So this is where uh, the acetyl-CoA is coming from. You should also be able to appreciate that ATP and, carbo, uh, and carbon dioxide are also produced as a result of glycolysis and trap cycle. So you should know that when is fatty acid synthesis occurring, where it is occurring, which comes next, it is cytoplasm of most of the cells of your body, particularly liver, you should not forget, but in many, many cellular cytoplasm, many tissues of your body, cytoplasm is the place where fatty acid synthesis happen. So remember these three points before we jump into the real pathway, which deals with fatty acid synthesis, that when does it happen? High carbohydrate meal. What are the ingredients required? Four. You should also know that what are the sources of those ingredients and we will discuss that in a minute, okay? And where does that happen? Cytoplasm. Now let's start this big cycle. In this picture here, you see um, mitochondria and cytoplasm. And you are very well aware of the fact that I've just told you that fatty acid synthesis actually happens inside the cytoplasm, okay? And when does it happen? When you have a high carbohydrate meal. You look in the blue air, when there is a high carbohydrate meal, this is where your fatty acid synthesis begins. Now, you, you know this already. When carbohydrate enters, glucose enters in your body, what happens? Glucose is converted into pyruvate by the process called glycolysis, okay? And this pyruvate then enters into mitochondria, that yellow bit here. Inside the mitochondria, pyruvate is converted into acetyl-CoA by enzyme called as pyruvate dehydrogenase. And this acetyl-CoA is then converted into citrate and citrate enter Krebs cycle. So this is not something new for you. You know this already, that you have glucose in your body, Glucose is converted into pyruvate by glycolysis and I am posting links of my uh, glycolysis lecture and Krebs cycle lecture in the comment in the, in the description section of this video. So do watch those videos as well. Okay. So once again, glucose enters in your body. It is converted into pyruvate by which pathway? Glycolysis. Pyruvate enters where? In the mitochondria. In the mitochondria, it is converted into acetyl-CoA and then citrate and citrate enters Krebs cycle. But you also know when you have a lot of carbohydrate in your body, when it is a high carb meal or it is a well fed state, a lot of ATP will be produced obviously by Krebs cycle and glycolysis. And I told you that isocitrate dehydrogenase, which is the main enzyme regulating and controlling Krebs cycle, it is inhibited by ATP. So when you have a lot of carbohydrate, there will be a lot of ATP and ATP will inhibit Krebs cycle. So if Krebs cycle is inhibited, what will be accumulated? Citrate. So citrate will be accumulated within the mitochondria and citrate then comes out of mitochondria. Very important guys, pay attention here. So this citrate then comes out of mitochondria and citrate is converted into oxaloacetate and malate and pyruvate. Okay. Now, when citrate is converted into oxaloacetate in the cytoplasm, 
it produces acetyl CoA. So this is the acetyl CoA which will be used for fatty acid synthesis. Remember I told you there are four things which are required for fatty acid synthesis. The first one of them is acetyl CoA. And what is the contributing source of this acetyl CoA? Citrate when it comes inside the cytoplasm. Okay, so this acetyl CoA will contribute towards fatty acid synthesis. Now, this citrate, oxaloacetate, malate, and pyruvate thing is also producing NADPH. I told you this is the second thing which you need for fatty acid synthesis. So, once acetyl CoA is produced, it is converted into melanoyl CoA by an enzyme which is called acetyl CoA carboxylase, and this is an ABC enzyme. When I say this is an ABC enzyme, it means it requires ATP, it requires biotin, and it requires carbon dioxide, okay? So ATP and carbon. So up till now, you should appreciate that the four ingredients which were required for fatty acid synthesis are all on this slide. From what was the first ingredient? Acetyl CoA. From where is the acetyl CoA coming? From citrate. Inside the mitochondria or outside the mitochondria, okay? So acetyl CoA comes from citrate. From where does any DPH comes? Any DPH comes from conversion of malate to pyruvate. Okay. From where ATP comes? Glycolysis and Krebs cycle. From where carbon dioxide comes? Again, glycolysis and Krebs cycle. Okay. You should also be able to appreciate that acetyl CoA decarboxylase is heavily regulated enzyme. And what do you think will potentiate, will augment the effect of acetyl CoA carboxylase? Obviously, insulin. Because insulin is the is the is the one which is uh, which is driving how to utilize glucose and store it into fatty acids. Okay, so you have more glucose, you have more insulin, and you have more activity of acetyl CoA carboxylase, and glucagon obviously inhibits it. Okay, so so far. Let me once again repeat all this story. When you have a high carbohydrate meal, when you have a lot of glucose in your body, it is converted into pyruvate by glycolysis. Pyruvate gets into the mitochondria and via acetyl CoA and citrate, uh, it gets to the level of Krebs cycle. But when there is a lot of ATP produced, the Krebs cycle is inhibited. As a result, citrate levels increase and citrate comes out in the cytoplasm. And once it is in the cytoplasm, it is converted into oxaloacetate, which produces acetyl CoA. Okay. Now, acetyl CoA, when converts into melanoyl CoA, the next step is production of fatty acid palmitate by the action of enzyme called fatty acid synthase. So this is the fatty acid that you produce in your body. 16 carbon palmitate fatty acid is the one that you can produce. So humans can produce only and only this particular type of fatty acid, okay? So, and this is a saturated fatty acid, which means it does not contain any double triple bonds. So that's the only type of fatty acid that you and I can make in our body de novo, okay? Now what happens to this fatty acid? Uh, before that, we need to discuss that I told you there are four things needed for fatty acid synthesis. Acetyl-CoA, you know the source, it comes from citrate. ATP, carbon dioxide from glycolysis and Krebs cycle. NADPH is coming from malate to pyruvate conversion. There is one more source from where NADPH is coming and that is HMP shunt. You remember I told you the product of HMP shunt, one of them is NADPH. So it also contributes to fatty acid synthesis. Now, once the fatty acid is synthesized in your body, it goes into the endoplasmic reticulum. And in the endoplasmic reticulum, it elongates, okay? So elongation occurs and also introduction of double bonds, which means unsaturation also happens. But in human body, remember this point that unsaturation cannot be done beyond carbon number nine, which means that there are some fatty acids which are required for the normal prostaglandin arachidonic acid synthesis, linoleic and linolenic acid, we cannot make them in the body. So they have to be taken in the diet, essential fatty acids, okay? So remember this point. And once you have made the fatty acids, it gets out of the organ. For example, if it is the liver, it comes out of the liver as triglyceride packaged in VLDL. And this VLDL is then stored in the adipose tissue. And there is an important clinical correlate here. If someone is alcoholic, in alcoholics, the packaging of fatty acid in triglyceride is disturbed. So alcohols, alcoholics, they have 
they they do produce fatty acid, but the fatty acid is not being able to release out of liver. Therefore, they get fatty liver. All the fat they produce is stored inside the liver. Okay, so very quickly, one more time, what we are discussing is fatty acid synthesis. Fatty acid synthesis in well-fed state, in high carbohydrate meal. When you have a lot of carbohydrate, it uh, the glucose is converted into pyruvate via glycolysis. Pyruvate enters into mitochondria and follows the normal pathway, which is the production of acetyl-CoA, citrate, and Krebs cycle. But once a lot of ATP is produced, it inhibits Krebs cycle and citrate levels in the mitochondria increase. Now, this citrate comes out of the mitochondria into the cytoplasm and it is converted into oxaloacetate and once oxaloacetate is produced it also produces acetyl-CoA okay and oxaloacetate is then converted into malate to pyruvate and during the malate to pyruvate conversion NADPH is produced okay and you know the rest of the story you also must remember that what is the fatty acid we make it is the 16 carbon fatty acid palmitate which is a saturated fatty acid okay and where does unsaturation happens endoplasmic reticulum but to a limited level not beyond carbon number nine okay and what happens to the fat that we make it comes out of the organ as triglyceride alcoholics inhibit the packaging of triglyceride into VLDL which means alcoholics produce fatty acids but they cannot release it so it accumulates in the liver and liver gets fatty okay now, last thing, remember, I told you there are four ingredients. You need to remember what are the four ingredients for fatty acid synthesis and from where are they coming. So the first ingredient is acetyl-CoA and you should know it is coming from the citrate. Okay. The second ingredient is NADPH and it is coming from two sources. One from malate to pyruvate conversion and second from HMP shunt. What is the third and fourth? ATP and carbon dioxide and they are coming from glycolysis and Krebs cycle. So guys, this is all about fatty acid synthesis. I hope you understood it well. If you did not, please rewind the video, watch it again, uh, like the video, share the video, subscribe the channel and I will see you back again with a new video very soon. Thank you very much.